Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I did a poll on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, by the way, you can see my handle there. Go ahead and follow me. I post a lot more about the food I eat and the training that I do and behind the scenes, how I live my life. So I did a poll recently on my Instagram and asked you guys what you wanted to see and a overwhelming majority wanted to see what I actually eat. And I thought what better time than to go through my kitchen cupboards and show you my grocery haul and what I generally eat on a low carb diet. Uh, seeing as my 12 week strong curves challenge is about to start on August the 2nd. If you wanna get on board, you can go to the link in the description box. <music> clearing out my kitchen cupboards, getting rid of all the junk. Not that I had that much anyway. So if you want to get a good idea of what it is I eat on low carb, because I know a lot of you are super confused. You may have known if you've seen my previous videos that I used to do very strict keto while I was healing my body from hormone imbalances and uh, digestive issues, but now that I'm tip top healthy and feeling amazing, I still eat low carb, but it's a kind of umbrella term, if you will. Low carb for me just means no processed carbohydrates, so no bread, no pasta, no cakes, pastries, uh, mainly store-bought items, processed junk, that kind of thing. If you haven't watched my Big Food Owns You and you don't even know it video, then go ahead and watch that and that will give you a really good idea of where my values lie when it comes to healthy eating. I also eat no refined sugars and try to keep even my natural sugars very, very low and minimal. I got rid of my sugar cravings, my sugar addiction a long, long time ago. And that's pretty much it. Aside from my food intolerances, which took me a long time to figure out, I know I don't do well on dairy, although I love it. I love cheese so much, but it doesn't sit well with me, so I don't eat it. I tend to stay away from grains, so wheat, oats, rye, barley, that kind of thing, even if they're whole grain, doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. I know that's touted as a massive health food. I just massively disagree. If you want me to talk more about that in another video, I will do. Let me know in the comments below. But of course, look, I'm human, right? And we live in a in a world that is perpetuated by a system that is not in favor of our health. So there are some processed items that I do eat, but I'm very, very mindful uh, about it being high quality and understanding the ingredients within them. So I know that what I'm eating uh, is as healthy as it can be. And also, if it's my birthday, I'm gonna eat cake. If it's Christmas, I'm gonna eat Yorkshire puddings. And if my friend's having a birthday at an Italian restaurant, you sure bet I'm gonna be eating some pizza. But those are rare occasions. I really do follow the kind of 80-20 rule, uh, where 80% of the time I'm eating this healthy food, and 20% of the time, probably even less, it's probably more like 10%, I allow myself to indulge when the time calls for it. And the only reason that I can do that successfully is because I've spent 10 years focusing on eating for health and uh, working on sugar addiction and other food issues that they no longer affect me. So I can go out and just eat those things in moderation and it doesn't affect my results. And you can too, but it's not a quick fix. Anyway. I'm digressing. This is a week's worth of grocery shopping um, and I'll show you the kind of things that I eat. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna show you all of the uh, meat and fish and eggs that I get because I wanna put them back in the fridge so that they don't go off. So I buy from my local farmer's market here in sunny Queensland in Australia. I am super blessed that we have access to incredible produce, a lot of ethically sourced, locally grown, fresh, amazing, organic produce from family owned farmers. If you don't have access to farmer's markets and fresh whole fo foods like that, then you just do the best that you can in that video I mentioned earlier, Big Food Owns You. Please watch that because um, at the end of the video, um, I give you some awesome resources and just ways to make a change for your circumstances, for your schedule and your lifestyle. Do the best with what you can from where you are. That's all you can do. I obviously eat 
an animal-based diet and I want you guys to understand the importance of animal-based. I'm not saying you have to eat red meat every single day, although it is extremely healthful and it's also a food that has been massively demonized in the media. I definitely am going to do another video on that so you guys understand because I feel like you, you're all being misled down that route. So I eat red meat, I eat fatty fish and uh, bone broth, you guys know I love my bone broth, uh, pork as well as eggs. So check out what I've got from my local farmers here. I get two trays of this. Um, these are jumbo sized eggs and they are from Freestone Valley Farms, which is local to me in Queensland. This is nature's multivitamin, okay? This has every vitamin known to man that your body needs minus vit C, okay? So nutritious and so healthy. Um, don't be scared of the cholesterol either. Your body needs cholesterol. Moving on from the same lady, she also um, has uh, Berkshire pigs. You can see here pork, USA ribs. I'm gonna marinate them. I'll show you what I use for my marinade, but I'm gonna marinate them and put them in the slow cooker. Um, my slow cooker is a lifesaver. Absolutely love my slow cooker. <music> I also got some sausages this week from her. These are gluten-free, no nasty additives. It's literally 100% pork, and I'm so excited. I'm gonna throw these on the barbecue this week. And I also got from the same lady, this is a uh, pork leg roast, and it's boneless, and so we're gonna do that in the oven. Actually, the Viking is going to cook for me, so he's gonna do this one. I'll normally do that with some um, of my seasonal veg, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, that might look like a lot of meat to you and I suppose it is but I want you to just remember that I have to feed a literal viking at home so uh yeah he eats a lot so I would prefer to spend my money on good quality food and I make that a priority and I sacrifice it for other things I know that I'm nourishing myself because if you don't have your health you have nothing anyway Moving along. Okay, and here you can see I've got my salmon fillets and I've got some prawns. These are all local, right? So I get them off Tasman Star Seafoods. They're also based in Queensland. They're local. They are a, a family-owned trawler and it brings in uh, amazing seafood from our local shores. So I love seafood. The DHA and the EPA, uh, the, the healthy fats, in uh, salmon and in prawns, so good for you guys. I buy a couple of bags of these as well as chicken carcasses. These are chicken feet, um, organic. Um, this is from my local butcher, my local organic butcher. And that's what makes this amazing broth that I have on a daily basis. So incredible, so good, full of collagen, gelatin, all the amino acids that you need so gut healing and so good for your skin and your nails. If, if you aren't onto bone broth, you need to be. This is also from my local organic butcher and this is beef mince and it's not the lean kind. It's got all the good fat in there because that's what gives it flavor, but also you need fats, okay? You need fats. It might be um, like a chili con carne or a spaghetti bolognese, uh, obviously minus the pasta, right? I normally do it with zoodles or something. So that's pretty much all of my fish, meat, broth, and eggs. you through the rest of the food haul. So I'm going to go through what I keep in my kitchen cupboards. This is like pantry essentials and kind of grab and go snacks and also all the vegetables that I eat. Again, I go to a farmer's market every Sunday. I go to a small stall that 
uh, is like the go-between person who travels throughout the week uh, to all the local farms and picks all the best organic veg from those farms and they bring it to the markets and that's who I buy my vegetables off. So it's not direct from a farmer. These are all from lots of different farms in the area, but they are all local and it's all seasonal and all organic. Vegetables doesn't make up the bulk of what I eat. Always got green, green veg on the go, whether it's um, zucchini or green beans, sprouts, broccoli. I just go with whatever is available uh, seasonally. Green veg is fantastic on low carb because it's high fiber, but it's lower in carbs. You know, when you look at things like potatoes and carrots, when you're looking at your starchy root vegetables, that's when the sugar count starts to go up, especially if you cook them. I don't mind too much about that because like I say, I'm very flexible, I'm not strict low carb. So I do eat potatoes and I, I do eat root vegetables and starchy vegetables, uh, but I tend to eat them on days when I'm intensely working out, say like on a lower body day from training glutes, then I know that my body can utilize more carbs more effectively. So the only other thing that I guess I eat, uh, which isn't technically low carb, this is a very high carb food, but it's just jasmine rice, just white jasmine rice. It's the only grain that doesn't upset my stomach or make me break out. And like I told you before, I avoid most grains, uh, but this is the only grain I will eat. It is obviously gluten-free and white as well because brown rice does not agree with me at all. Um, it's far more easily digested in, in white form. Not particularly low carb, but it's whole foods. And for me, under that umbrella term, of low carb, that's what it means for me in the way I eat. So if I was to eat carb rich foods, it's generally rice, potatoes, maybe sweet potato, um, and root vegetables, starchy vegetables, like carrots and that kind of thing. Corn as well, as you can see here, I love corn. Zucchini is also a huge low carb favorite because you can make things like zoodles uh, instead of uh, pasta if you're making like Italian dishes and you want to keep them low carb and you don't want to be having processed grains. The other thing I love to make with my zucchini is that you can bake with it. It is so versatile. If you like the texture of like carrot cake or banana bread, then zucchini is quite similar. Mushrooms as well, I didn't mention my mushrooms. And of course, onion, ginger, that kind of thing is also great. <laughs> only fruit I pretty much eat on low carb. Um, of course, if we're going to get technical, a tomato is fruit and so is an avocado. Lemons and limes, they're fruit and they're low carb um, friendly as well. Uh, but berries is the go-to. If you are someone who loves to eat fruit and you eat multiple pieces of fruit a day, I would say that that might be a sugar addiction, especially if you're having other carb-rich foods and it might be something you wanna look at. Fruit is nature's candy. I'm not saying it's not healthy to eat fruit, but the way we are programmed to eat multiple portions daily, it's not sustainable. It's actually not natural. It's actually a lot of sugar. I'm not demonizing fruit before you all go nuts. I'm just saying, as a society, we tend to eat way, way, way too much of it. And what is deemed healthy by our health institutions, in my books, is not. It's great if you are trying to adjust to a lower carb way of eating and you find it difficult to give up your fruit, then berries is a good substitute. They're the lowest in sugar. It might be mixed in with some natural yogurt, although berry doesn't sit with me very well, so it might be coconut yogurt, which I, I haven't bought this week, but coconut yogurt is is also a good um, dairy-free option. So that's my fruit and my vegetables. Let's now move on to my pantry essentials. So this is the stuff that lives in my kitchen cupboards, which is a staple. I use it in my cooking daily. It's the stuff that you buy once and you chuck in your cupboard and it stays there for a while. Tomato passata. I use this to make chili con carne or um, bolognese or any sort of Italian dish that calls for tomato sauce. Always read the label. The only ingredients in here is literally certified organic fresh Italian tomatoes. 
the end. And it's the same for this as well, uh, tomato paste, so this is concentrated. And again, this is literally just 100% organic tomato. The reason I'm telling you this is because you can buy store-bought tomato sauces and it looks the same, but it's not because a lot of them will have hidden sugars or preservatives, additives, things that you really, really don't want to put in your body. So just always make sure you read the back of the label, look at the ingredients list and check if it's just pure tomato. People will argue that it has more sugar, that it's not necessarily low carb friendly, but like I said, I'm super flexible. It's a whole food. It's a goddamn tomato. Then of course, herbs. Any good kitchen is gonna have a ton of herbs. You can obviously grow your own. And so I like things like chili flakes, rosemary, thyme, oregano, Italian herb mix, basil, chives is my absolute favorite. I hate coriander though, or cilantro as you Americans call it. I hate cilantro. I wanna have a t-shirt made that says I hate cilantro because it literally tastes like perfume to me. I cannot stand it. If you are also anti-cilantro, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, is uh, apple cider vinegar. I use this in my broth, right? So if I put a generous glug of this, uh, when I'm making my broth with my chicken bones in the slow cooker, it just draws all of the nutrients out of the bones. Um, so that's what I mainly use apple cider vinegar for. Some people like to drink it with hot water and lemon in the morning, it's meant to be good for your digestion. Um, I also use it when I have salads. So I'll make a, my own homemade salad dressing with, of course, extra virgin olive oil, a splash of apple cider vinegar, maybe lemon juice, salt, pepper, really simple, but delicious. I only use olive oil cold on salad dressings. And if I am going to cook, I'll use pure coconut oil um, or grass-fed butter, which is in my fridge. Wait, grass-fed, organic, real butter. None of that margarine okay that stuff is toxic highly processed full of hydrogenated vegetable oils and I'm talking about sunflower oil vegetable oil canola oil uh, rapeseed oil it, it's generally what the uh, restaurant industry use because it's super cheap um, and so just be really mindful if you are going to buy an oil please opt for something healthier like an olive oil or even like a avocado oil even better yet grass-fed organic pasture-raised, real butter. This is a superfood. I smother it all over my steamed green vegetables. Um, it's in a lot of my baking. Um, I, I put it in everything, okay? I cook with this stuff. Like, this is my, predominantly where I get my healthy fats from. And coconut oil is a miracle oil. Can I just say, I use this for everything. Coconut oil for stir fries, coconut oil in a lot of my baking, any sort of Asian dish calls for coconut oil. Ooh, and I also oil pull within it for 15 to 20 minutes. And my gum health has just improved massively. Now let's look at my condiments and my sauces. I don't know about you, but I'm a saucy kind of girl. I like my food to be wet. And so I'm always looking for really healthy condiments. Whole seed mustard is great. Again, you're buying this store-bought, so just make sure that you really Read the back of the label and look at the ingredients because normally store-bought mustard will have so much crap in it that's just horrendous. This is by Global Organics and I bought it from my local health food store and it's literally cider vinegar, whole mustard seeds, water, sea salt and that's it. So in my book this is a really good store-bought mustard and I recently came across this brand called Jevity and they do all sorts of things, but I love this mayo that they make. It's called Great Guts Mayo. Mayo is like one of my loves, and it was something that when I started to look at what our food's really made of, I was shocked at what they put in, in store-bought mayo. I was really upset because I love this stuff. Again, looking at the ingredients list, they use reverse osmosis water. I mean, that's like next level. Organic extra virgin olive oil, and this is the key. They're using olive oil, not vegetable oil. So that already is a win for me. Of course, it's pretty pricey, and you can just make your own. Next, we've got coconut aminos, and this stuff is a savior. When I started thinking about processed foods and being healthier, I gave up soy sauce, so high in sodium, and also preservatives and additives and just 
yucky stuff that shouldn't be in your body. So this to me is a great alternative. It is sweeter, it's not salty, but I put it in everything. I, I make a salad dressing with it. I also put it in my stews or my casseroles. Basically just fermented coconut blossom nectar, okay, and some spices. It's minimal in sugar, right? If you're doing very strict keto, then perhaps you'd have to monitor and see how you react to this. Generally speaking, on my flexible, low-carb way of eating, this stuff is great. And obviously, I couldn't talk about low-carb without mentioning nuts. This is ABC nut butter, so almond, Brazil, cashew nut butter. And um, again, it's just whole ingredients, you guys, right? So just it literally says just three ingredients, roasted almonds, roasted cashews, and roasted Brazil nuts. And this is great because it's high fiber, high, high fat. It is a little bit higher in carbs, so if you have no willpower when it comes to nut butter, I'm just gonna put this fair warning in here. I could sit here and eat this whole jar in one sitting. This is my Achilles heel. You can make fat bombs with it, which are amazing if you're um, adjusting to a low carb way of eating and you're making sweet treats that are healthy and low sugar. Nut butter is awesome for that. Moving along, let's talk salt. This is pink Himalayan rock salt. This stuff is a godsend. If you're gonna cut out processed carbs, if you're gonna lower your sugar intake and you're eating real whole foods that are lower in carbs and higher in protein and fats, you're gonna to want to increase this in your diet, okay? This type of salt, pink Himalayan rock salt or Celtic sea salt at a pinch, is also good. These are full of trace minerals that your body absolutely needs. A lot of people, when they adjust to a low carb way of eating, they get that keto flu and they feel like crap. It's because they're not having enough of this and also not drinking enough. So up your bone broth, up your water and dump a lot of this stuff in it. I'm talking like up to a teaspoon a day. I salt my food generously, but I'm not talking about that horrible table salt, which is bleached and full of chemicals and anti-caking agents. I'm talking about the good stuff. Pink Himalayan rock salt. Next, we've got my obsession, Kalamata olives, or any type of olives in brine are really, really good as a snack on low carb. And here at the end, we have a couple of drinks that are good substitutes um, on low carb. I have recently given up coffee. <sighs> It's been tough. And this has been my substitute. This is roasted dandelion root and it's got chicory in it as well. Look, it doesn't taste exactly like coffee. It's got that kind of bitterness, but it's a full bodied, got that aroma, makes me think I'm drinking coffee. It's helping me. That's what I'm on at the moment. And, and it's great because it's literally just roasted chicory root and roasted dandelion root. Hot water, Bob's your uncle, you think you're drinking coffee. Anyway, the other thing is if you are addicted to soda, fizzy drinks, beer, and you are trying to get healthy, and especially on low carb, then this is the way to go. Kombucha, it's huge here in Australia. Everywhere has kombucha. This is the Lobros brand and in peach and ginger. It's actually really, really nice. A glass of this is so much better than a glass of champagne or beer or Coke. Great substitute if you're trying to wean yourself off the high sugar alcoholic drinks. It's literally just fermented tea. And the longer you ferment it, the sugar goes down and the probiotics go up. So that's all my pantry things. Uh, and now here at the front here, we've got some snacks. These are processed items, right? But if I'm on the go and I'm stuck and I need a snack, these are great. These are from my local health food store. You can buy them online as well. Natural beef jerky. And again, we've got these kind of like pepperoni sticks from the same brand. This is Kui. This is an amazing, amazing brand. It's 100% Australian organic beef, nothing artificial. Again, it's grass-fed beef, which is really important to me. It's literally just grass-fed beef, organic coconut aminos, right? Sea salt, apple cider vinegar, black pepper, organic beetroot powder, and some culture. That's it. This is, this is such a clean product. So I know this is technically processed, but by reading the ingredients, you can tell whether this is a healthier version or not. This is exactly the same, just in like a pepperoni stick. They're great on the go if you get stuck. The other thing that I'm a little bit obsessed with, this brand, these are probiotic kale chips in dill and onion. I am obsessed 
with dill. Team dill. Let me know down below if you're team dill or team cilantro. And if you're team cilantro, you can't sit with us. But the great thing about this is that it's air dried and it's got no added oil, right? Because that's the other thing. A lot of these processed chip, vegetable chip-like products are fried in canola oil or vegetable oil, which is super unhealthy. So I'm, I'm really happy that this snack is just air dried, no added oil. It's called Pure Snack. They're handmade in Byron Bay, which is northern New South Wales, which is just a little bit further down south from, from me. Not far at all. I love Byron Bay. It's local. It's healthy. It's low carb friendly. These are the kinds of businesses that I want to support, right? It, yes, it's a processed item, but it's healthy. And this is the other thing um, that is great as well. If you miss like crackers and biscuits and that kind of thing when you go low carb, there are options. You can of course make your own as well. It's a little bit more effort, but at least you know exactly what's going into your body. It's not gonna spike your insulin. It's not gonna mess with your hormones. So this is 100% organic ingredients and it's literally flax seeds, sunflower seeds, carrots, sun-dried tomatoes, dulce flakes, spirulina, organic herbs, margarine, basil, oregano, rosemary thyme. That's it. So again, a processed item, but it's healthy because I'm looking at what the ingredients are and I can name all of them and I know that it's whole foods made. And again, this is from New South Wales. So this is an Australian brand, it's called Kits. Is it called Kits? Yeah, Kits Living Foods. If you do dairy, a slice of like brie cheese on this would go amazing. I tend to have it with my nut butter or even just some butter on there as well. Um, love this. And there you go guys, that's my pantry essentials. Let's move along. I've saved the best till last. <music> Here's the number one complaint that people have when you say, try low carb, and that is giving up baked goods. And I totally get it. I grew up as a kid eating a really unhealthy diet. It was full of processed carbohydrates, a lot of baked goods, bread, cakes, muffins, cookies. I mean, I had a junk food diet. And so when I went low carb and cut all of that out, it was super, super hard. This really helped me. These items here are all low carb friendly and you can make amazing baked goods without the grains and without the high sugar. The only non low carb friendly thing I have here is Honey, if you're gonna do low carb, the aim is to reduce your sugar, depending if you're doing strict, keto, flexible, cyclical, whatever, there's a million more ways to do it. But if you are trying to keep your sugar low and deal with your sugar addiction, then you're gonna probably opt for something like this, which is an artificial zero sugar sweetener. There are plenty of other artificial sweeteners. Uh, one of the other ones that I think is fairly okay is monk fruit. I personally just like liquid stevia drops. A little goes a long way and I don't like to eat tons and tons of like powdered erythritol because recipes tend to call for a lot of this stuff. Whatever you choose to sweeten your baking with, the rest of the stuff is pretty straightforward and healthy. The main thing is that you don't want to be baking with Grains, so wheat flour. You want a substitute for that. I particularly like a mixture of almond flour, which is basically just crushed up almonds, and coconut flour. Uh, some recipes call for coconut, some just for almonds, some a mixture of the two, but these are amazing. Occasionally a recipe might call for psyllium husk, uh, more for like bread rolls and that kind of thing. These make anything from bread and crackers and tortilla wraps and donuts and cookies and cakes and muffins. I mean, you can literally make anything you can think of in the high carb version, you can make low carb. And it's so much better for you. Even if you don't follow a low carb way of eating, substituting for these are so much better for you. Uh, one of my other staples is raw cacao powder, not cocoa powder, raw cacao. You wanna make chocolate chip cookies, you wanna make chocolate cake, you wanna make chocolate mousse, chocolate pudding, chocolate chocolate, just anything chocolate basically. If you're a chocolate fiend, this stuff will save you. Couple this with some stevia or erythritol and you're baking and you've got that sweetness, that sweet hit, but without the added sugar, without the insulin spikes, 
and you're gonna be able to actually adjust to low carb. The other things I use is cacao nibs. Much like the raw cacao, they've got that bitter flavor, but it's good to use instead of chocolate chips. Um, and then the other thing I use here, this might be a bit harder to get your hands on. This is certified organic cacao butter. And of course, desiccated coconut always gives you that nice texture. And of course, sesame seeds, these are great in savory baking, like if you're making breads, but I also throw these in my salads. And of course, chia seeds. This is fantastic if you wanna make chocolate pudding. So again, I use my cacao. Um, I might use coconut milk or coconut cream, which you can just buy in a can. Again, just look on the back that it's 100% coconut and it doesn't have any added preservatives, emulsifiers, or gums. <laughs> is everything that I have in my kitchen cupboards ready for my challenge starting on August the 2nd. It's a 12 week program if you want to join me and hundreds of other women who are getting on board, embracing this way of eating and smashing their workouts. Go to the description box, click on the link and get on board.